Hello, I'm Magnus. What you're watching is part two of a video series about temporal tables in SQL Server. In part one, I showed how we can create a new table, which is system versioned. In this part of the series, I'm going to show you how you can take an existing table that already has data in it and make it system versioned. So let's jump over to Management Studio and have a look. So what we have, we're going to look at exactly the same table that we had in part one, a price list table with a product ID and the list price. Uh, so let's create the table first and then add some data to it. So this is going to be the difference between part one and part two. In part one, we created an empty table and enabled system versioning uh, immediately in the create table statement. Now, we're going to add system versioning to an existing table. So as you remember, we need a row start and we need a row end uh, to be able to implement system versioning. So let's just add these alter table dbo dot price list add row start date time two and I'm going to set an offset of seven which is a really high resolution. You probably don't need it. It's down to 100 nanoseconds, but depending on, on the use case, of course. Uh, and remember, the higher resolution you have for this, the more space it's going to use up in your pages. So don't use too high resolution, but use high enough resolution. Anyway, uh, so we could try just doing generated always as row start. And then we do alter table DBO price list add row and date time two again. Same resolution generated always as row end. And actually we just need one statement for it. And then we could add period, period for system time, row start, and row end. And we could try running this, but it's going to generate an error because you cannot add new columns to a table without either allowing them to be null or give them a default value. And we cannot allow these columns to be nulls because then they can't be used as period for system time. Uh, so we need to add default constraints to this. Constraint df price list row start default. And for the row start, we need to set a value. Uh, and we don't really know when the value was at. I mean, when the row was added to the table, so we don't have a proper row start. So I'm going to use 1900 1st of January as the row start, the default for row start. And then we're going to need a default constraint for the row end. And this we can't really choose. It has to be the max date uh, for the date time to uh, data type with a resolution of seven. And that's going to be 9999. 1231, 23, 59, 59, and then we need seven decimals. That's the max date for a date time to seven. And now we can add these columns. Well, we could, but then I need to name my default constraints with given different names. Uh, sorry for that. All right, so now we have them and now we can enable system versioning. Alter table dbo dot price list uh, set system versioning equals on and we can name the history table. History table equals dbo dot price list history. And what I want to do now is drop the default constraints because they're just going to be in the way. Uh, we always have we we already have decorated the columns with generated always. We don't need a default. 
and this default is going to be wrong anyway. So alter table price list drop constraint the uh, price list row start and let's do the same for row end. So what we have done now is take an existing table with data in it and system version the table or make it a temporal table. So we can just try test if it works. Update dbo dot price list set list price equals nine 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 where product ID equals one. And we can query the main table and the history table just to see that the system versioning actually works. Select star from dbo dot price list. Select star from dbo dot price list history. And indeed, uh, in the price list table, we have our three rows. And the row that I changed got another row start. And we have one row in the history table. So system versioning works. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or any other part of the video series, then please subscribe to the channel and you will get notified when a new video is uploaded. In the next episode of this video series, uh, I'm going to show you how you can take an existing table with data that already has a history table, but where you have implemented the versioning in the application la layer and how you can transform it to use system versioning in SQL Server instead. Thanks for watching.